Yo, 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 episode 41, the Dirk episode uh, of the CNC podcast, Collecting and Connecting. Uh, welcome, you guys. We're here. Uh, I'm 3Ball34. Uh, we got our usual suspect, uh, Glenn. Uh, what's up, g -Wax? Hey, what's going on, guys? Great to be here today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad you're here with us. Uh, King Brett is missing out. We're, this is the uh, first week of April, and our boy is getting married. Uh, so definitely make sure you congratulate him and give him a shout out. Uh, King Brett, we, we love him. He'll be back soon on the show. Uh, special guest we have today. Um, man, very excited. We're talking Blazers again, which is exciting. They're uh, definitely a cornerstone in the Top Shot community. Uh, but we got a special one because we got the Rip Pack City captain, Mike G5033. What up? Hey, Woo! how we doing, fam? How we doing? Doing good, doing good. Sorry for the long intro, but I uh, got several oh, things to celebrate. But uh, most importantly, you're here and we're going to talk Blazers, Top Shot. Uh, and have a good time. Absolutely. I'm excited. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, captain of the uh, Rip Pack City uh, uh, Trailblazers. How, how far does your fandom go back? How long have you been watching Blazers? Oh, I feel like I've been a Blazer fan my whole life. I was born in Portland. I grew up in the area. So I grew up going to games. Uh, my dad would always get tickets from his work. And so I was always going to games. I feel like ever since I would, was able to go. I feel like about five years old, I feel like. That's so awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, lifetime uh, uh, Blazers fan. Uh, Absolutely. Good to hear. Uh, same with me with Mavericks. I've lived here in the Dallas area my whole life. So yep. uh, that, that's all I uh, really know. Uh, we'll see some intertwining coming up. I'm going to bring up one of our regular segments uh, here right at the top, uh, just because it's going to be fun to talk Blazers with you. Uh, Glenn, how long uh, Knicks fan? I know we talked about it previously, but you've been watching forever, right? <clears throat> yeah, like 92, 93. Very nice. there. Yeah, I started playing basketball seriously around maybe 11, 12 years old. And I started watching the Knicks at that point and they were good. They were getting to the playoffs every year. I remember their finals run and uh, I think it was 93, 94. So. Long time. Ballin. We're Ballin. definitely going to talk 90s again. It's uh, uh, mm -hmm. Mike G. It's uh, one of me and Glenn's favorite subjects is to talk 90s NBA. We definitely try <laughs> oh, yeah. to touch on it as much as we can. Oh, yeah. We're old as sparks, you know? Yeah, right. Just <laughs> did on a recent episode. And I'm actually going to take us back to the 80s for our first uh, segment, Sticky Icky Wicky. Ooh, uh, when we're researching on Wikipedia, uh, uh, everybody's Google nowadays of trying to find out information. We're looking up Blazers facts and trying to find stuff to prepare for the episode. Um, 1983, uh, had a big time draft, uh, for the Blazers. You guys took Clyde the Glide 14th overall in the first uh, round. Uh, I definitely remember watching him play and growing up in the eighties and nineties, as we're referencing, my dad always talked about five slamma jamma and Houston and how good they were, right. um, which is a funny reference because the very next year in 1984, uh, first overall is Hakeem Olajuwon from that Houston five slamma jamma team with Clyde. Yep. Um, Fortunate for you guys, y'all just drafted Clyde the year before. He's an incredible shooting guard, uh, about to be uh, one of the best of all time. And so you kind of have that slot filled and uh, not thinking about MJ, number two overall there after Hakeem. You guys take Sam <laughs> Bowie to add some size, seven-footer. Let's let's get a monster in there. Uh, oh, and, man. and definitely got uh, uh, thrown at it. <laughs> oh, man. But, you got to um, make sure you remind me of that one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's harsh. I don't yeah. know, man. It's something that was brought up that. early all growing up is, man, they passed on uh, MJ <laughs> to take Sam Bowie. Uh, Hakeem kind of made sense because he definitely ended up with a great career, but still uh, uh, just uh, uh, tough uh, to uh, to uh, feel that one. But you guys redeemed yourself uh, in that next summer. You made a monster trade, sent three guys and shipped uh, a, a fat lever uh, and a couple guys for Kiki Vandaway, which is uh, the connection with the Mavericks. We actually drafted him, Glenn, in 1980. And he mm -hmm. refused to play in Dallas. Just said, I'm not getting on the floor. We booed him. He never suited up. And we traded him <laughs> to uh, Denver uh, later on that year. I mean, can you blame him? Uh, take it easy. We were a <laughs> brand new franchise. It was the oh, first man. year. We've talked about that previously. Mm -hmm. But the reason I want to talk 1985 draft, uh, very next year, you guys got a point guard, Terry Porter. Uh, last pick of the first round uh, and just ended up being just an absolute stud in Portland. All-time assist leader. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to circle back to the all-time points leader of Clyde the Glide. He held it till uh, 2022, right, until uh, uh, Lillard broke it. I had Correct. a ton of information there, and I had to get it all in. Sorry for talking at you guys, oh. but uh, just such cool history it. with the Blazers uh, and Sticky Icky Wicky this week. <laughs> That's all good. I love it. 
Yeah, I don't know. Rubbing in the whole not taking MJ thing. I mean, that's. I mean, that's, that's hard. <laughs> we can always we can also go to the not picking Kevin Durant and taking Greg Oden, right? Like we haven't had the best luck in the draft. Let's be real. <laughs> teaser to a later uh, segment. Yeah. Uh, but to circle back to our '90s talk, uh, 91, 92. Uh, I, I'm seven, uh, eight years old and definitely uh, watching the most basketball I've ever watched in my life, uh, watching NBA when it comes on. And they definitely showed uh, playoffs when that popped up. And uh, definitely uh, Jordan and the Bulls uh, was a big reason as well. We got WGN everywhere. We've referenced that on several episodes. Uh, but 91, 92, uh, you guys had a historic uh, a series against the Jazz, uh, Stockton and Malone. Uh, we just right. had uh, Colton, the Utah Jazz captain, on and talked about them in the playoffs and the pick and roll. Uh, but you guys knocked them out of the playoffs to get all the way to the finals to force uh, MJ, uh, face MJ and the Bulls, uh, which was an iconic series. Right. Not only did we pass on MJ, but then he took away a championship from us as well. Yeah, you saw years how I later. Wrapped, wrapped that up in a bow right there. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got the punchline for me. I didn't have to say it. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I remember uh, Terry Porter and Clyde Drexler in the early 90s. I remember them being the two. I guess they were probably the two biggest players on the team, right? Like the, For the most part, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know. Absolute when did Sabonis surprise. get there? What year did he arrive? Was it that, late 90s? I don't know the exact year he arrived, but it was a little later in the 90s. It was? Okay. Yeah. He wasn't on that team against the, and against the Bulls. No, players. no. We've okay. had uh, Arvidas on a, a recent um, – I named that player uh, segment, which will be coming up. We'll, we'll ask you uh, if you can name those players that uh, Sir Glenn has uh, brought up. Um, I'm looking forward to it. For Apparently sure. I'm knighted now, huh? <laughs> so looking up um, uh, Clyde, just right back to him. Uh, went to high school in Houston, which I didn't know, and uh, which makes sense of how he ended up at the University of Houston. Uh, mm -hmm. Stayed local. Um but had a similar MJ story, uh, tried out sophomore year and got cut, didn't make varsity, and then ended up uh, shining in a Christmas tournament, put up like 30 and 20. And they were like, who is this guy? And uh, ended up uh, getting a little bit recruited after he played junior and senior year. So never really hear that about Clyde, uh, but very similar. Right. On a past episode, I know, Mike G, you watch uh, all the CNC uh, podcast apps. We had uh, Mac uh, uh, on from Boston Celtics, a uh, TSD Garden uh, captain, and uh, he – we had a funny moment where he was saying about getting cut and making the team. And we compared him to MJ and had a big laugh. Uh, right, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. that well, dude, I have a similar story. I mean, I was trying out for all these different top shot podcasts and shows. I just, <laughs> I wasn't making it. I was getting cut, but then here I am the, you know, the, the, the creme de la creme at the top over, over at CNC now. So you just got to keep at it. Right. Those you good vibes. The they, came, they came to the top. I like it. <laughs> That's awesome. I see all three weird. of us repping just solid Top Shot shirts. I, see I saw that. I love it. Um, yeah, man. On to top, top Shot. Well, wait, wait, wait. wait. One more okay. Thing. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. One more thing. Get in there, so, Glenn. Mike, Mike, who's your favorite current uh, Blazer on the team? Oh, man. I get this question asked a lot. It's a tough question. Um, I'm a huge Shade and Sharp fan. And I, I really like his potential, and I, I see what he can do and what he can become, and I really want him to stay as a, as a Blazer. Um, but he's been injured a lot this, this season, so I've been really rooting for Anthony Simons. Um, okay. I really think that he can take the next step and be an all-star within the next couple seasons, and and he's been really been impressive, and he's a clutch player. I like him a lot. And what do you think about Scoot? Do you think maybe they should have taken one of the Thompson twins instead, or are you happy oh, with man. him? Oh man! If you want to go to that, then I think we should have traded the pick in general and kept Lillard. But um, I like Scoot. I do. Um, he's still very, very young, and I know the point guard's a tough position to learn. So I think that it's going to take a few years, but we're going to see him be a bright star. I, he's going to be a big star. He's yeah. in an environment where, I mean, as long as you're prepared to take a couple L's, you have so much youth. Uh, and as mm -hmm. you mentioned, the injuries. Uh, love Shade and Sharp. Shout out mm -hmm. to Throwdowns. Uh, and right. I definitely I love uh, uh, his game. And you guys have some sick young talent that if you right. can uh, build around those guys, uh, definitely got something. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. And Simons is a, is a good player. He's a nice piece to mm -hmm. a, a really good team. I don't right. know if he's a, if he's your number one guy on a really good team, right. but he could be a two or a three probably, right? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Favorite bl uh, Blazers moment on the Top Shot platform? Is it a Lillard uh, archive moment? Whatever. Uh, I do love that moment. I yeah. do love that moment. Um, 
I guess it's not really a Blazers moment. It's more of a Lillard moment. I do love his all-star moment when he hits the half-court shot and then he taps Sick. on his wrist. I love having that moment on there as well. <clears throat> Sick. Yeah, he's so uh, definitely the, the logo uh, shooter for sure. He's letting it fly mm -hmm. from everywhere. Right, right. Yeah. Are you following uh, Milwaukee at all because he's there? Are you still a fan of his? I am. I am. I'm rooting for him. I mean, I'm happy that he joined a team where it's kind of easy to root for because Giannis is an easy player to root for. Like, I don't know how you can hate Giannis. So mm -hmm. I'm happy he didn't go to Miami because it would have been a lot harder to root for him in Miami. I think that video of Giannis battling the ladder is like one of the best things on the internet. <laughs> that, was, that, was that was good. That was good. Uh, uh, running into the locker room, chasing after the uh, game ball was the game also ball. fun. Uh, Giannis is crazy. I like him a lot for sure. <laughs> he's he's hard to hate. Yeah, and he reminds me right now of Dirk. Uh, speaking of forty one on our Dirk episode, uh, uh, just sticking with the team and being there long term. Uh, on previous episodes, we've had just tons of Blazers royalty. Shout out to Rip Pack City, Scotty J, James Dylan Bond, and Blazer fan. We've definitely talked about this given flowers to Lillard of stuck around for forever and, and played there a really long time. It definitely sucks to see him leave, but uh, definitely gave you guys some great years and some great memories. He's been so much fun to root for and watch up there in the pack Northwest. Definitely. Absolutely. So yeah. I love that you're still giving him support, even though he's over there. I definitely talk about that. Me and me and Glenn talked about Jalen Brunson for like 10 straight episodes there for a while. Of I have the same <laughs> thing as I'm just rooting for the guy. Right. Uh, we send so many players back and forth from New York to Dallas. Uh, uh, it feels like we're, we're, you know, sister cities, but uh, which is yeah. terrible to say about the Knicks. Sorry, everybody. Um, wow. What up, Glenn? I'm fired today. <laughs> Better drink some more of that haterade. Let's what you're sipping. Oh, over there. man. Well, we're um, we're two weeks away from the playoffs or so, uh, give or take. It's uh, just started in April. Uh, have that coming down for, for Top Shot. It was fun to see the redemptions last year and see the playoffs uh, moments and things. So that was definitely uh, exciting for the platform. Communities were, were pretty jazzed up and excited. Um, what are you thinking about where Top Shot is right now, things that we're doing? Uh, been a lot of exciting drops recently. I don't want to steal any thunder. What, do you, what, do you, what are you thinking, Mr. Captain? I mean, that's a good point. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing if they do bring the redemptions back because I think the redemptions were great. And I know the community seemed to enjoy them a lot. So I'm really excited to see if they bring those back and what they do exactly and how they play. I I'm excited for that. Um, I am excited that this last drop, the Rookie Revelation, I'm excited that that actually was smooth and we had no hiccups, no issues, anything. It's like we've come a long way and it, that was like probably the biggest drop of the season. Right. And so mm -hmm. for that to go smooth and I was just really excited to see that. Always good to see uh, uh, an easy transaction, good pack right. drop. Everything's there. The moments are sick. Uh, right. Obviously uh, audio, right. Didn't I see that? Yeah. 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 yeah so, audio. so nasty. Love it. And, and the leaderboards like up to it, like they all were, went, seemed to go smoothly and like everyone got the rewards on time. So like it, it, I was happy to see everything go down. Another shout out to the nineties, Glenn, when nasty was a good thing. Ooh, that was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Kids don't uh, say that anymore. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch. Uh, <laughs> favorite set on the platform. Uh, what are you collecting? That isn't a Blazers team set. Oh, that you, man. Uh, the Blazer, my favorite set all time is definitely the seeing star set. Um, Ooh. that was my first pack drop. Um, I was always obsessed with the seeing star set. I did the, the challenges at the time that got me all in. And I I've always had a special place. It's always had a special place in my heart. The seeing star set. The players they chose were just yeah. perfect. I mean, it was just a, a, a unreal set right at the time, you know, uh, um, uh, incredible for you. I, we were on the sidelines watching that and wishing mm -hmm. we could get our hands on uh, those. Uh, still trying to figure things out. When did you join the platform? Tell us about starting on top. So Show. that was actually my first pack drop was that uh, seeing star set. Sick. Um, I remember I pulled a Anthony Davis seeing stars. I still have that moment. I made sure I kept that one. Yeah, you um, nice. That's a good memory. So, right. And then so they had the it was a LeBron and a Kevin Durant were the challenge rewards. Yep. Yep. And so that was like the biggest thing to me. I was like, I can get a LeBron challenge reward. So I was all in on that. So I was pretty excited about that. And uh, shortly after they had the all-star set and that's when they had the Damian Lillard uh, half court shot. And so like, I had to do that challenge reward. I had to collect all that. And so I was all in right off the bat. I was, I was excited. Yeah. yeah I like seeing stars. I, I have yeah. it. I can't imagine what the numbers look like as far as what they were. <laughs> I don't even want to look back. It's they are. Shout out especially doing the challenges at the time. Like I still have some of those moments from doing the challenges. 
those yeah. numbers are probably rough. Yeah, challenge LeBron and challenge uh, KD. Uh, definitely yep. a, a sick moment. Uh, we yep. just had Tanner Wentz uh, on uh, T Wolves fan, and he definitely had the same memory. Uh, that was his first pack drop, and seeing stars mm-hmm. was his favorite set. Uh, people right. that have been around for now uh, three years uh, uh, this past uh, March is crazy. Yep. Um, uh, it, it's uh, really cool. Uh, definitely love that set. 100%. Yeah. Do you have any rare sets, Mike? I don't own any rare sets, full sets. I do not. Okay. I, I haven't got to that level yet. I, I did originally have most of that all-star set from that series, mm-hmm. uh, S2, but I ended up selling a couple and to get different pieces here and there, but I still own quite a bit of it. But That's a I good go one. Back the all-star is a good one to sneak into to get the rares. It was a downside for me to, like, you don't get um, – team leaderboard points it doesn't go towards you know because it's team lebron or team durant right. or you know west or east uh, right yeah, yeah but, it's, uh, it's definitely uh more accessible now i remember when i used yeah. to look at the prices of the rare sets you know in the thousands and all this but i think there are quite a bit now that are maybe four or five hundred maybe around there you chip away at it like one at a time Right now, our weekly segment on prices in 2024. No, <laughs> this is not financial advice, <laughs> but, right, right. but I will tell you something if, if you're a top shot collector and you have the patience to wait a year after a set comes out, you will be doing really well, right? Because <laughs> right. people, uh, same thing that Mike uh, just referenced of a uh, uh, reward comes out that he wants to have. He buys those moments and gets in there because the lottery, they're trying to find the best cereal right. and whatnot and get, get right. that reward. Um, same thing I go through with Luca all the time because uh, they just <laughs> bait me with, there's Luca and I definitely want to finish it. And then a yeah. year from now, uh, those will unlock and I'll most likely maybe uh, move them around, uh, so to speak, and keep that Luca. Uh, so there might be some opportunities, as uh, Glenn's mentioning. This is not financial advice. No, it's not financial <laughs> advice at all. Uh, speaking of rares, fast break. You playing? I am. I am. Unfortunately, I, I feel like I am terrible at fast break. I don't know what it is. I feel like I watch NBA all day, every day, but I don't know. I just I pick the wrong players every single night. As an avid fan and fantasy player, as we've talked about, it's pretty tough. I think right. they're making it um, – you know, decent, uh, shout out to another Blazer. Alxo's over there crushing it, but oh, he man. should crush it with his collection. Right. What up, right. fam? Um, <laughs> we need to get him on here soon. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely having a lot of fun playing. Love that fantasy aspect. Love that it's on the platform and, and on right. the app, and uh, we are we are moving and grooving. Absolutely. Yeah, we spent so much time chatting about it in the, you know, in the CNC chat, who you're playing, who you're not playing, updates on who's in, who's out. Uh, it's, it's it's really fun. It gives you a lot more to you know kind of discuss and and talk about your top shot moments with with other collectors. With you know, thank 100%. you, Glenn, for organically bringing it up. You can find others like us at CNC. Uh, <laughs> we're in the Discord. Uh, definitely check us out in the uh, links below, uh, Instagram and Twitter, where you're probably seeing us for sure. And then this video is on YouTube, where we have our CNC channel and dropping regular content. So uh, definitely check that out. Collecting and connecting dot com. That was basically like an ad right there. I mean, I just knocked that read out. You saw that, Mike G. What up? Clip that was it. beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> Clip it. Um, like me with professionals over here. No kidding. I'm going to move forward. Uh, we're we're going to come back to name that player. Favorite basketball memory. What? Uh, it could be playing. It could be going to a game. It could be recent as in stuff in the top shot. In real life, you've done a lot of cool stuff, and we're going to get into a lot of that. I just want to give you an opportunity before you uh, – Burn uh, the, that best memory. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if you want it as a player or do you want it as a fan? You bring it. Oh, man. As a player, myself would have to be. That's we had what Glenn a, wants to hear. He wants to hear this ball in your hand. Yeah. Um, it would have to be. I think it was a summer league game. And we had a few of our players that were out from a different. I think they were playing football at the time. So we only had like six players for our team. So. I played almost the whole game. I ended up with 46 points, and that was like my, wow. my high. It was, I think it was my junior year in high school, I think it was. And so that was my, my career high was, was that, and that was probably my, my best moment as a player. That is wow. incredible. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm glad to know that it's not just in Texas that we have a lot of uh, football players that are right. uh, still in season and then uh, making mm-hmm. it over. Uh, that was right. definitely always uh, fun when they weren't there and you get an extra bucket. That was so much fun. Six, my dude, that's incredible. Right, right. Speaking of Dame Willard, uh, that's getting <laughs> buckets. You, you can't just throw that many in. Like it, They're playing some defense on you. Right, right. I, I got a lot of three-point shots that came. I was just shooting. I like we, it. We off might as dribble well. or kick out. So could you All shoot of the above. All That's of the above. <laughs> you, still, you still play now? I don't, man. I, it's been a while, unfortunately. I need to get back out there. Shout out to the old legs. Um, Seriously. Yeah, I was uh, spot up early on. Uh had to really work on off the dribble. That was tougher mm-hmm. for me. I could hit it off the kick out. Uh, that off the dribble really started coming around when uh, Steph Curry came into the league and he was doing these behind the backs, off the dribble, three point shots. And that's when I got in the gym. I was like, I need to start doing these as well. But for sure, we just had the real <laughs> Joff on and talked a ton of Steph Curry and, uh, oh, man. and even back to his Davidson days. But he was just going mm-hmm. by double teams and pulling up, and he still does it against the best athletes in the freaking world. No uh, sorry, YouTube. And uh, <laughs> wow, what a horrible word to say. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just get banned. You know it. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's funny what a, you mentioned what a that, favorite though. basketball memory. What'd you say, Glenn? I was going to say off the dribble or catch and shoot. I was always an off the dribble kind of guy. I was more of a point guard and I kind of dribbled and got into my own shot. And later in my basketball playing days, I got better at just catching and shooting because I wasn't really used to that, right? I wasn't mm-hmm. used to just spotting up in the corner or whatever. Someone kicks it out and just be ready to shoot it as quick as possible. Uh, but I got a little bit better at that lately, too. So, I don't know. It's an adjustment. Very nice. Yeah, I have a, a cool. chat with uh, King Brett and Treaticus. And uh, Treaticus is always shoot first type of guy. But I was telling him that you have to shoot first to be able to be the best passer you can be. Otherwise, they don't respect you as a scorer. And once you make one bucket or hit that first three, then they're coming up on you. And you become you know, a much better passer just because they're giving you that cred. Yeah, it's 100%. like Alfred Payton was on the Knicks. Ooh. And he's a great defender. And he can cut. drive. But his shot, what's that? <laughs> Deep cut, Alfred Payton. I like it. No, but he he's actually not that old even. But he he's he does a lot of things on the court that are useful, but he can't shoot. So it, as your point guard, if it, you're he's like 6'5 or something. He's coming down and people are just laying off him. And then you can just you can just like guard all the shooters. So in, in today's NBA, especially, the point guard has to be able to hit consistent outside shots definitely and that definitely. was our segment of complaining about nicks uh, you know. <laughs> he was on other teams too i know i'm the messing with guys. you guys i'm messing <laughs> with you uh yep. glenn introduce uh our favorite segment uh let's test him i think he's gonna knock these out yeah I, I, so. man, I, I never know what difficulty to make it let's hope so. uh, we're gonna show you three different pictures of former blazers and you just have to name them Awesome. And I think it'll be fine for you this time. Name I hope that so. player. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third uh, yeah, time he's around made with it, the Blazers, so you're he's not. made it so really tough picking. in some episodes. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> and then you've made it pretty easy in some, and it's hard to gauge sometimes. So I'm with you. I like I like yeah. this uh, group of three that uh, Glenn's picked out here. This is a solid group of guys here. Awesome. Yeah, and maybe Once you could a... like talk about each one too if you want. If you would, like have an opinion on them. Definitely. One's a good throwback. Let's start with this guy. I think this is relatively easy because of just the face, but pre headband, oh, giving away. Jermaine O'Neal. What up? Yep. Oh my goodness, that's I was, crazy. I haven't seen I haven't seen him in a blazer jersey in a while. Yeah, throwback. No kidding. Uh, this reminds me. This brings back memories of like in middle school. I think my my uh, my science teacher had a a big cutout of Jermaine O'Neal. And it was like a life size on the wall, so we always we'd always go up and stand next to it and see how tall we are and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So that's what it reminds me of. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, got the Mavericks in the background. I like that. Uh, oh, definitely go. Mike Finley on the left, and I love those uh, jerseys for sure. Those are uh, iconic. Oh, I ca- I kind of know who that guy is on the right. Like I can't remember his name, but I, I recognize his face. Even I was trying time. to place it, and I didn't uh, have time to get to a roster. Uh, I didn't want to cheat, but I was trying to figure it out and couldn't get it. But I like it. One for one, I named that player. Good start. So far, so good. Yes, sir. I think you'll be fine. <sighs> Right. I can't go back too far anyway because the, the, the old pictures are just so blurry wow. and grainy. <laughs> I'm getting there. Speaking of technical difficulties. That dial-up internet over in Texas. <laughs> right. So already mentioned here, name that player number two. Ooh-wee. 
Greg Oden. Look at that guy. Good times. So funny story. Um, he actually lived like uh the neighborhood across from me growing up, or he, he had a house there. And so one of my neighbors, one of my friends, that was my neighbor, would always like take videos of him whenever he would leave his house or like anything like that. So we would always like watch him in his crutches and all that stuff after he got injured and like he always would have parties and stuff. So like it was kind of crazy. Poor dude could not stay healthy. I know it was rough. Yeah, he also that. was like 20 years old and he looked like he was about 48. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> At Ohio State, dude, shout out to Torek for knowing the college. Uh, definitely something we noticed and laughed at in March Madness of like, who is that 44 year old out there just getting buckets and double doubles? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I think sure. it was something to do with the face. He had like, I don't know, his forehead had like deep wrinkles or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So your buddy was uh, uh, doing what they do to Bobon now, uh, way beforehand. Uh, they d- d- take pictures of Bobon doing everything, taking out right. the trash, walking a cat, all kinds literally, of stuff. Literally, yeah. literally. <laughs> do people walk cats in Texas? Is uh, that no, I, I regretted it as soon as I said it, but you know it's out there. <laughs> Cats out the bag. So. Oh man. I brought it back. Uh, name that player number three. This dude. I see it. Absolute stud. What up? I like those. Uh, Ooh, Bonzi. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I loved Bonzi back in the day. <clears throat> Just the thickest armbands and headband. Right. That's awesome. Well, right. I got something to, to mention. This is the only time I had to edit a photo because on his armband, the one that's uh, higher up, it said Bonzi on it. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I can kind of see the outline. So I took white and I put it over it. I'm like, that's not fair. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> I was going to say, I definitely have friends that have the, the ones that say Bonzi on it. They have them as collectibles and stuff. I've seen them around. That's I cool. Wonder, I wonder if he's covering tattoos or if that's just a, a, a style. Yeah, that's a good question. Because back then they were still sticklers and being weird about that with TV. We've talked to about LeBron right. in the past, even though I know that was high school. But still, ESPN, like, hey, cover your tats, bro. Right. Um, could have been back then. You never know. Uh, but awesome. Three for three. I figured that was coming. Uh, I recognized all three names as soon as they came across. So I knew they were going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah, Bonzi Very good was stuff. Underrated. You're a captain blazers in real life events. Top shot. Oh, yeah. uh, we've even had you on the show in previous ones. Cause you and Trevor have been in several pictures uh, with previously mentioned Terry Porter. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk to us about being a captain and doing stuff as a blazers fan, collecting on top shot uh, and hanging out. Oh man. So it all kind of started thanks to, to Trevor. We were doing uh IRL events before the captains kind of came along. And, and so once the captains kind of became a thing, I was like, I want to get involved any way I can. And so thankfully Trevor already kind of had this kind of infrastructure that where he was kind of setting everything up. So I was like, how do I, what, what can I bring to the table? Right. And so I was like, what would, we, what would be cool to, if we could have, let's say a player come or like some, a past player, so anything like that. So that's when I started reaching out anywhere I could to like get anybody at all. I was like, let me see if I can get anybody to come to any of our events. And so we had the whole Top Golf event for a while back, and we were talking to Top Shot, seeing if they can get us a player. And unfortunately, everyone was out of town and they weren't able to. And so, thank uh, thankfully, the night before our event, or like a couple nights before our event, I had seen Peyton Pritchard out out downtown Portland, and I was like, hey. Um, I know a friend of his, let me reach out to him. And so I reached out to him and I was like, yo, do you think Peyton would come through? And he's like, oh yeah, definitely. I was like, okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's set this up. Sick. And so ever since then, I was like, let me just see if I can get players to come to our events. And that's when I reached out to Terry Porter and got Terry Porter to come to a couple of our, our events now. And that's just kind of how I feel like I can add value because Trevor was already so established. I was like, how, what, what can I do? Right. And so that's kind of where I did and making the TikToks and doing stuff like that. And that's what I, really what I was, what, was all about at first and i just love the community man the community is great and just to see how big rpc's grown and it's just it's amazing man it really is and there's so many good guys in there very cool you guys are one of the og communities as yeah. you talked about you guys were doing stuff beforehand uh, right shout out to trevor uh james dylan bond uh yeah. congratulations again on the new baby very excited right. for you uh but yeah okay. you guys did so much for building the team communities yeah. and growing that and making that a, a real thing because we definitely love that as uh, Glenn up there with the, uh, MSG and the shout out to the Knicks uh, uh, fandom. Uh, you know, we got uh, King Brett here with the Mavericks and uh, all teams have their own communities, own discords. And it's built, uh, you know, uh, a lot because of you guys. So shout out to the RPC and Rip Pack City. Uh, you guys have done Appreciate a lot. It, 
Appreciate that. Yeah, and shout out to Blazer Fan for was the one that set up the Discord originally and did all that stuff. And shout out to Nantucket who holds the Discord down now. And shout out to DJX. The DJX does it so much for the community as well. He's always doing the game day giveaways. And DJX a good guy, man. I appreciate him a lot. Love it. Love it. All stars, the uh, legacies right there that yeah. you're mentioning. We've definitely talked about those guys on the show, shown uh, um, in real life events and pictures. Uh, of you guys at different things. So very cool uh, to hear you, the shout outs and uh, you guys all doing different things. I can't stop saying you guys, that must be a Texas thing. I need to get out. <laughs> you all would be, y'all, y'all would be y'all. worse, right? Um, yeah. well, how do you have all the phone numbers of all these players? <laughs> so I don't actually have the phone numbers. Uh, Terry Porter, I reached out in DMs and he actually re- responded. Wow. Which was kind of crazy. I actually uh, recently talked to uh to um, uh, I'm thinking, oh, Channing Fry, which we were trying to set up as well. Nice. And I just DM'd them, and they actually responded, which is kind of crazy. A guy that we've, t- we've talked about this, Glenn, uh, a big guy that developed the three-point shot uh, later in the career and really kind of rounded out that game because um, he was also obviously doing stuff inside and had mid-range, uh, but really stretched it out, uh, knocking right. down threes later in his career. Right. Shout out to Channing Fry. Uh, shout out to Twitter for uh, just giving us the access to being able to reach out and DM athletes and uh, pastor them right. to come to events. Right. I saw on Twitter yeah. you uh, joined March 2021. Is that because of Top Shot? Yeah, I would assume so. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> my, my guy. <laughs> Uh, that's basically, we got King Brett doing the same thing. He wasn't on Twitter at all. And then, uh, it was just a mandatory thing. Same with me with discord. Never Mm -hmm. heard of it. It's something we got to be on for this thing that we love. Cool. Let's do it. Right. Absolutely. I don't know. I had to get on Twitter right away and start trying to figure out or find everyone else that's collecting the seeing star set. That's what I was doing probably right off the bat. Collecting (laughs) and connecting, baby. Yeah. There's a ton of us out there and Twitter only represents just a small percentage of the right. collectors out there. So, we're, I mean, we're finding more and more every day and, and joining uh, forces, but um, it's huge out there. There's a lot of people and, and more coming. Uh, I hear and see people on the platform all the time that haven't been around for six months and come right. back and see that so many developments that have happened. You know, us that are here every week, we're, we're looking at stuff and we're very, very close to it. So it all kind of piles together and, uh, uh, it, you know, very close. And all of a sudden you kind of back up and it's like, whoa, there's a lot that's happened. Um, you've noticed that as a captain, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, Mike, besides Dame, is um, is there another NBA player from a different team that you're just a really big fan of that you follow? So my all-time favorite player growing up, and it always has been, was Vince Carter. Sick. I was always a humongous Vince Carter fan. Um Ever since the 2000 dunk contest, actually, that was the day where I became, became a, a Vince Carter fan. And so I, I know where I was years, when I was when we were watching that. That, yep, that was yep. unbelievable. It was wild. Yeah, he was. He's he's one of those players that's not mentioned amongst the greatest, but he had a nice run there. There's probably mm-hmm. a five or six year run, maybe five or seven year run, where he was. You could you could argue he was the best player in the NBA for a little while. Right. We were right. lucky to get some of older events uh, here in Dallas. He never played for the Knicks, huh? Nope. Dang, no, he was on the Nets, though. I was hoping he'd play for the Blazers one day, but he never did. <laughs> um, I didn't get to go see him late in his career when he was playing for Atlanta, the Hawks. And uh, I bought four, fourth row tickets right behind their bench. So I was it was on his birthday, too. So I was yelling at him, happy birthday. And he turned around and said, thank you. Same. And at the end of the game, he threw his headband, and I got his headband. So I was all excited about that. Wow. And, yeah, so, like, I have that in a frame in the other room. And so, like, I'm a huge Vince Carter fan. That's You're like, I moment. sleep in the headband every night. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, his Series 1 <laughs> moment is so badass. Uh, that three uh, in Atlanta, oh, yeah. just funny. Uh, just the whole moment and watching it, uh, just classic Vince. It's actually in New York. It's at MSG, his final shot. That's crazy. Shout out to MSG. We talk so much Madison Square Garden, as you know, as an avid watcher. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Vince. Uh, I think, you know, I think it's actually not me thinking. I'm pretty widely known that COVID uh, made him retire. He probably would have kept right. on for a little bit, but he wasn't going to continue under those circumstances. And right. Yeah. Um, he didn't necessarily which, get the proper send off, but. It's understandable. Right. But yeah, for sure, Sir Vince Carter. Um, right. Yeah, I saw a video on Instagram recently where it has Kobe talking about Vince, and Kobe's talking about how he's just an amazing, incredible in-game dunker, and he doesn't want to get caught in one of his posters. Right. <laughs> and they show a whole montage of his like in-game dunks. I don't know who you'd compare nowadays. I guess 
maybe like a jaw when he's healthy or I, I don't even know if there's really a comparison. It's it's yeah. tough. It's tough. Yeah, those highlights yeah, go ahead. Those, those highlights are what I used to watch like before all my games in high school. Like I would just sit there and watch them on YouTube just over and over again cuz those highlights just pump you up, dude. Like they're wild. <clears throat> yeah, I think you're right. I don't think there there is a player nowadays that dunks that creatively and that often. Like right. Right. I mean, who would be the closest? I mean, Zion, maybe, maybe, maybe Ja. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's some That's guys, tough. as previously mentioned in the throwdown set, because they're dunking on the shot blockers. It's not like they're catching, you know, right. back bench guys. It's uh, they're dunking on Gobert. Right. Um, what about Speaking, the three ball? Who do you think is the best dunker right now? The best dunker right or just now? the guy that's most comparable? Uh, who well, would you most likely – who do you most want to see in the dunk contest? My, my homer pick right now is a uh, uh, shout-out to Daniel Gafford uh, because uh, he's just uh, throwing crazy stuff down for the Mavericks no since he had the trade, uh, shot blocking like crazy. But as for across the league, I mean, Zion's definitely a great reference. When he's healthy, he's one of the best dunkers in the league for sure. Uh, Shade and Sharp, as previously mentioned, when he's mm -hmm. healthy. Um, mm -hmm. We used to say cock back all the time, early 2000s, and I think that's not as referenced anymore. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> did you go to uh, – yeah, so I'll answer the question. I guess Zion. Uh, I mean, that, that power – I feel yeah. like he's going to rip the rim off anytime he's up right. there. Uh, and that's not a heavy comment. Um, well, what about Ant-Man? I just thought of that. Ooh, uh, yeah. Dude, that's Definitely. a great point. Uh, Definitely. Uh, Erroneous on all counts. Uh, Anthony Edwards, best dunker in the league. Great point. Definitely. Arguably. But yeah. Shout out another one to Tanner Wentz and the Timberwolves uh, previously a couple weeks ago. You were at the All-Star uh, and uh, NBA Con and things. Uh, not, that's not the same thing. NBA Con and Summer League this yeah. past year, right? Absolutely. We've definitely covered that a bunch. and We've shared some pictures and things. One that popped up. I'm pretty certain that this is you. I'm going to be uh, embarrassed if not. You're next to Ginobili Soros here above I David. I am. Right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very oh, cool. Oh, man. There's uh, some... We've been knocking out our checklist and getting several of these guys. I see Chewy hiding back there on tippy toes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, talk about Dumbo, getting together Dumbo with collectors and other people, other captains. Yeah. There's some there's some goats in that picture. I see Dumbo mm -hmm. in the corner. I see Steve Boa's blockchains in that picture, which is cool. Yes, sir. He, he made it all the way from Australia. Shout out. We've definitely That's had awesome. some cool stories about him. Definitely want to get him on the uh, the show sometime. Yeah, uh, He's great on video and uh, representing Top Shot. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, when I saw this picture, and I already recognized several people because I'm a Top Shot creep, and I'm, a, I'm looking up everybody. <laughs> trying to find all the collectors, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been lucky to have several of these uh, studs uh, on the show and glad to uh, add you to the list. Uh, Absolutely. For sure. Done some really cool stuff. I love all the things with... Uh, Terry Porter and uh, things that you guys have been doing uh, since uh, the start of Top Shot. So very cool. I keep, keep doing it. Keep collecting and connecting, baby. Absolutely. All right. Who's your all-time favorite Blazer? All-time favorite Blazer player would probably be Rasheed Wallace. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> right. so I don't know why. Uh, I was I was known to get a, a few technicals in my day playing, and so I, I, I related to Rasheed Wallace quite a bit. From yes. uh, verbiage or hand gestures, I was I was one to always ball. I was always arguing with the ref. Um, I'll be honest with you, I just I never agreed with them. L Luca before Luca, I like it. right, right. Yeah. So that that squad had Pippin, Steve Smith, yep, G Bonzi, right? Yep, right there were some. Player. Yeah, who else was on that team? Who am I forgetting? You might even throw Arvita Sabonis on that one. Arvita Sabonis. Um. Who else was, was Stacy Augman on that team, or is that? Oh, that's a good maybe? question. That's a good question. I don't know. Was he on the Blaze? Was he on the Blazers? Or something? I, I believe know, so, right? I, that, yeah, I think so. I like it, Glenn. Oh, uh, Damon Stoudemire. Oh, yep, yep. A little, he was uh, our point guard, right? Uh, what was his nickname? Damon had such Mighty, Mighty Mouse. Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, that team was always competitive, and I feel like they always fizzled out in the playoffs. But during the regular season, they were monsters. And then they just couldn't get it done. But that was a really a big collection of talented players. And Brian Grant as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those those were known as the, the jail blazers, I guess you'd want to call them. <laughs> Pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, do they yeah. still uh, – they have to still represent Bill Walton and show stuff at games oh, and definitely. give him shout-outs on the regular. Definitely, definitely. Yep. Yeah, Glenn likes when they throw the history out there, especially when you got guys like that in the past. I uh, got to remind all the kids – 
uh, so they don't think he's just uh, a deadhead making sick references on ESPN. Dude, he's <laughs> right, a nutcase right. now. He's so funny, man. He is. He's absolutely hilarious. He is a yeah. riot, man. He is just having – the game will be going on, and he's just talking about uh, episodes of Gilligan's Island. He is all over the map. He's like is my he one – doing telecasts? I, I believe so. He does I've it every it once in a while. Yeah, like the uh, the college basketball tournament that Shamanad holds in Hawaii. He's always mm-hmm. out there in some wild shirt. Um, <laughs> but he's like top of the list that I want to get as a guest to come to one of our events. It's like Bill Walton would be the, the number yeah. one guy because he'd that's, be so energetic and be so friendly. That's top tier right there. Yeah, <clears throat> him and Hubie Brown can have a contest to see who the oldest announcer is right now. <laughs> right. That's a good question. What's something that y'all haven't done that you uh, would like to see y'all y'all do as Rip Pack City or the team communities? Uh, we haven't really. I've been seeing it recently more is like pickup games. We haven't really gone together to play basketball at all. So I, I would love to see who in our community can actually play because people talk, but I've never really seen it. So I, I would love to see that. Yeah, there's been several talks about uh, some get togethers from uh, mm-hmm. communities, uh, whether that's uh, groups uh, around or, or just the team communities themselves. I love to see it. Uh, I definitely right. need to get some shots up uh, to prepare for something. Seriously. Like that soon, for sure. Yeah. I think a they might the be scared they're... that you're going to get aggressive and start fighting people and fighting the refs, Mike. I, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, we're going to have to have some referees and security on here uh, <laughs> with Mike G in the house. For have sure. some medical personnel standing oh, by geez. just in case. But it'd be good for the YouTube views. We'd get some uh, yeah, there you some go. chaos. Some clips out of that one. There you go. Clip it. <laughs> nice. Um, that, that's awesome. I can't, uh, I'm excited to see uh, different things going on with the Nine Lives Lounge uh, tour uh, that is uh, going to different spots across the uh, country and community. Um, Absolutely. Love to see the pickup games. Love to see c- collectors going to games, courtesy of Top Shot and their communities. Yes. Uh, join your team's Discord for sure. It's never been easier. Uh, mm-hmm. Collecting uh, th- three moments, I think, per, per team to get in there, get in all 30. Um, I guess, especially the Knicks. Sorry, guys. Uh, having a blast this episode. <laughs> Brett would have said it if he was here. So, hey man, what is he doing? <laughs> He's getting married for like for like four months straight. What's going on here? Get on the yeah. show once in a while. Some beautiful island on the beach, getting married and <laughs> uh, uh, collecting and connecting, telling everybody about uh, Top Shot. Are there the rumors go. true that the theme of his wedding is Top Shot, and each table is a different Top Shot moment? <laughs> Might see Tr- Tritikus playing a guitar at the wedding. Yeah, shout oh, out to Tritikus. You're going to recreate the pool scene where he's holding them. There like you go. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Um, That'd be awesome. Yeah. Man, really so, good um, stuff. I love having captains on, and uh, you you are no uh, other, man. You are uh, a blast to talk to and hang out with, talking Rip Pack City and Blazers. Uh, definitely covered a lot of eras there, 80s, 90s, no and now recent for sure. Even got into the mid-2000s there, so got got everybody included. I love it. Right. I yeah, appreciate you guys having another me. top pick this year, right? We're going to, definitely. We're definitely – well, they own their own pick. Uh, they def- yeah. So they'll be I think like- we also owe a pick to Chicago. I'm not positive what that exactly is about. Oh, okay. You, you watch college sure basketball, uh, Mike G? I, I used to be really into college basketball. I haven't the past couple of years as much as I used to be, but I'm definitely excited to watch March Madness. Yeah, we're in full swing right now and, and uh, got that going. So that's always fun. Yeah. Uh, even people that don't watch basketball are at the office pools filling out brackets and things. It's right. fun to see people uh, – uh, knowing who you know Weber State is, uh, another <laughs> shout out. And uh, wait, wait, since we're in full swing, three ball, which team are you surprised has been uh, going on a run so far in March? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, since we're recording this early, he's putting me on the spot. I love what Michigan State and Duke are doing. I have no idea. I haven't been. Uh, Look at those it. Tar Heels, man! They're doing great. Just oh man. It. Sheesh. Yeah, I, I like that. We're, we're probably gonna have to make uh, some uh, playoff predictions coming up soon uh, without. Uh, knowing what's coming up, so it's going to be fun to do that ahead of time. I like <laughs> mm-hmm. the setup. Right, right. <laughs> um, merch, man. I love seeing the shirts, the uh, the OGs, the newer ones. Uh, the one that Glenn's got on is so fire. Oh, uh, I definitely know. have some some cool stuff coming out, and we are no different. We have it at CNC, and you can find that stuff at shop.collectingandconnecting.com. Um, I'll put that up here on the screen. And our featured merch of the week is a pretty cool set that's close to Glenn and many others in our CNC group is the video game numbers. Uh, such a sick T-shirt there. Um, 
just kind of yeah. representing and talking the set art. And uh, I love that as collectors, we're able to rep that and uh, uh, show off uh, our collection in other ways. So pretty cool. Get all that and your team communities, CNC merch at shop.collectingandconnecting.com. How's the uh, the CNC merch After Dark collection going? I love it. We got to get our After Dark episodes going so that we can uh, get some night nighttime uh, collectors on the air, maybe uh, a beverage or two, and uh, have some fun. We do a lot of this stuff during the day, so uh, usually pretty chill. But we, And we had Triticus on for so long, so uh, a glass of brown would have turned that thing up real quick. So <laughs> you know, t- take it easy for the CNC crew. All good vibes only, right? Um, <laughs> right. Well, now that he's a mayor, I don't know if we can reach him anymore. So, no kidding. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, congratulations again on uh, winning the race. We're so proud of uh, the big guy. Uh, Sir Treaticus is going to make us proud and tell all of Arkansas about collecting and connecting as he already has been on his (laughs) mayor race. Make an official top shot day in that town. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yep. Well, uh, Mike G, uh, leave, leave us with something great for Rip Pack City. Shout out to Top Shot and uh, CNC and Collecting and Connecting. Uh, what, what do you want to tell the viewers and the audience out there uh, to, to leave us today? If you haven't already, make sure you're in the RPC, Rip Pack City Discord. Um, we do a lot of cool things, and there's a lot of great topics in there as well. And if you aren't in the CNC Discord, get in there as well. We're all collecting and connecting. Love it. Clip that right there. Hey, there we go. Glenn, what you got? I don't know. You never know who's going to be in there. I mean, Terry Porter could be in there. Bill Wallen. You never know. You never know who you're talking to. (laughs) Leave it up to Chewy. Got Harrison Barnes in there. There's no telling who's in the chat, right? Right. What up? Name dropping all over the place. Uh, Appreciate (laughs) you, Glenn, for being here. Shout out again to King Brett. Congratulations, buddy. Excited for you. Mike G, all of Rip Pack City. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, You were fantastic. And uh, I love uh, being able to get together face to face and uh, have this fun. Uh, So appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you guys, man. I love what you guys do. Keep it up. Thanks, Mike. Great having you on. Appreciate it.